A warrior has only his will and his patience, and with them he builds anything he wants. But I'm not a warrior. You have started learning the ways of sorcerers. You have no more time for retreats or regrets. You only have time to live life like a warrior and work for patience and will, whether you like it or not. But how does a warrior work for them? I think there is no way of talking about it, especially about will. Will is something very special. It happens mysteriously. There is no real way of telling how one uses it, except that the results of using the will are astonishing. Because the first thing that one should do is to know that one can develop the will. A warrior knows that and proceeds to wait for it. Your mistake is not to know that you are waiting for your will. A warrior knows that he is waiting and knows what he is waiting for. In your case, you know that you are waiting. You have been here with me for years, yet you don't know what you have been waiting for. It is very difficult, if not impossible, for the average man to know what he is waiting for. A warrior, however, has no problems. He knows he is waiting for his will. What exactly is the will? Is it determination? No. Will is something else, something very clear and powerful which can direct our acts. Will is something a man uses, for instance, to win a battle when he, by all calculations, should lose. Then will must be what we call courage, I said. No. Courage is something else. Men of courage are dependable men, noble men, perennially surrounded by people who flock around them and admire them. Yet very few men of courage have will. Usually they are fearless men who are given to performing daring, common-sense acts. Most of the time, a courageous man is also fearsome and feared. Will, on the other hand, has to do with astonishing feats that defy our common sense. Will is a power, and since it is a power, it has to be controlled and tuned, and that takes time. Our will operates in spite of our indulgence. For example, your will is already opening your gap, little by little. What gap are you talking about? There is a gap in us, like the soft spot on the head of a child which closes with age. This gap opens up when one develops one's will. Where's that gap? At the place of your luminous fibers, he said, pointing to his abdominal area. What is it like? What is it for? It's an opening. It allows a space for the will to shoot out like an arrow. Is the will an object, or like an object? No, I just said that to make you understand. What a sorcerer calls will is a power within ourselves. It is not a thought, or an object, or a wish. Will is what can make you succeed when your thoughts tell you you are defeated. Will is what makes you invulnerable. Will is what sends a sorcerer through a wall, through space, to the moon if he wants. Don Juan went on to describe Will as a force which was the true link between men and the world. He was very careful to establish that the world was whatever we perceive, in any manner which we may choose to perceive. Don Juan maintained that perceiving the world entails a process of apprehending whatever presents itself to us. I asked him if it was a sixth sense. He said it was rather a relationship between ourselves and the perceived world. What you yourself call will is character and strong disposition. What a sorcerer calls will is a force that comes from within and attaches itself to the world out there. It comes out through the belly, right here, where the luminous fibers are. He rubbed his navel to point out the area. I say that it comes out through here because one can feel it coming out. An average man can grab the things of the world only with his hands or his eyes or his ears. But a sorcerer can grab them with his will. I cannot really describe how it is done. A sorcerer uses his will to perceive the world. That perceiving, however, is not like hearing. When we look at the world, or when we hear it, we have the impression that it is out there and that it's real. When we perceive the world with our will, we know that it is not out there or as real as we think. I have told you that when you talk, you will only get confused, he said and laughed. But at least now you know you are waiting for your will. You still don't know what it is or how it could happen to you. So watch carefully everything you do. The very thing that could help you develop your will 
is amidst all the little things you do. Only the idea of death makes a man sufficiently detached so he can't deny himself anything. A man of that sort, however, does not crave, for he has acquired a silent lust for life and for all things of life. He knows his death is stalking him and won't give him time to cling to anything, so he tries, without craving, all of everything. A detached man who knows he has no possibility of fending off his death has only one thing to back himself with, the power of his decisions. He has to be, so to speak, the master of his choices. He must fully understand that his choice is his responsibility, and once he makes it, there is no longer time for regrets or recriminations. His decisions are final simply because his death does not permit him time to cling to anything. And thus, with an awareness of his death, with his detachment, and with the power of his decisions, a warrior sets his life in a strategic manner. The knowledge of his death guides him and makes him detached and silently lusty. The power of his final decisions makes him able to choose without regrets, and what he chooses is always strategically the best, and so he performs everything he has with gusto and lusty efficiency. When a man behaves in such a matter, one may rightfully say that he is a warrior and he has acquired patience. When a warrior has acquired patience, he is on his way to will. He knows how to wait. His death sits with him on his mat. They are friends. His death advises him in mysterious ways how to choose, how to live strategically. And the warrior waits. I would say that a warrior learns without any hurry because he knows he is waiting for his will. And one day, he succeeds in performing something ordinarily quite impossible to accomplish. He may not even notice his extraordinary deed, but as he keeps on performing impossible acts, or impossible things keep happening to him, he becomes aware that a sort of power is emerging, a power that comes out of his body as he progresses on the path of knowledge. 